All right, students, let's go ahead and now revise the next chapter. The next chapter is duty drawback. Everyone over here. Sir, duty drawback, we have section number 74 and we have section number 75. They go ahead and say duty drawback on re-export of duty paid goods. So, sir, supposingly, I have gone ahead and imported this bottle. I have gone ahead and paid the duty on this bottle. Baba, any duty which I have gone ahead and paid, Baba, custom duty can be basic custom duty, social welfare surcharge, CVD which is there, sir, IGST which is there, GST compensation says which is there, all the duties of custom which you have gone ahead and paid. If I go ahead and import this bottle, I paid the duty. Now, I export this bottle, whatever duties I have paid, I will get duty drawback. So, we are going to understand now, section number 74 says duty drawback on re-export of the duty paid goods. So, you imported something, you paid the duty on those goods. Now, you are going ahead and exporting those goods, whatever duty you have paid, because you have changed the destination of the goods, Indian government says whatever taxes, whatever duties you have paid on those goods, we will give it back to you and that is known as duty drawback. So, let's go ahead and start with section number 74 now. Section number 74 as section number 74 1 and section number 74 2. Section number 74 1 goes ahead and says, sir, export as such. So, I went ahead and bought this bottle from outside India. I did not go ahead and use it at all. I went ahead and exported it outside India. Then they are going ahead and telling, if you go ahead and export it as normal export, might be as cargo or you export it as baggage or you export by post, 98% of the duties which you have paid will be given as duty drawback. Then section number 74, 2 goes ahead and says, if you go ahead and might be imported this bottle, use it for some time and then you export, you will get duty drawback, which is little reduced amount. And hence they have gone ahead and told, export after use, sir, how the duty drawback will be given? That is told by a notification, notification number 19, but 1965. In that notification, they have gone ahead and done three categories, which are there. Number one, when no duty drawback will be given. Number two, motor car, if anyone is going ahead and using, and he re-exports, means imported and then exported, what is the duty drawback that will be given, or goods imported by an individual for personal or private use, then what will be the duty drawback, any other goods. For an example, I went ahead and imported a projector for my personal use, then Baba, remember, I will come over here, but if I imported a projector, might be for my office use, then it will come over here. But car ka case mein, remember, whether anyone who import business use, non-business use, personal, uh, individual, Company, whatever it is, motor car always comes in the second category. Now, there are some items which you go ahead and import and use and export, then you will not get any duty drawback, which is wearing apparel. Sir, wearing apparel, if you go ahead and import, you use it for some time and then you are exporting, no duty drawback. Sir, tea chest, which is there, tea chest ka case may also no duty drawback after use. Exposed cinematographic flame, this all these movie flames which come into India, you saw the movie and now you are telling you want to export it after use, no duty drawback. The next one, unexposed photographic flame, might be paper, plates, x-ray flames, etc. After use, if you want to go ahead and export, no duty drawback, absolutely zero. But sir, what if I export this without use, then Baba, remember, without use, then as such, if you go ahead and export, 98% duty drawback is there. But after use, there is no duty drawback. Then, sir, motor car by anyone or goods imported by individual for personal or private use, then whatever is the 100%, I will go ahead and say, is the duty paid. Means, whatever duty paid, consider it to be 100%. Now, they will go ahead and reduce and give you you have to find out the percentage and that much percentage will be given as duty drawback. So, they are going ahead and telling whatever the import duty you have paid, supposingly I go ahead and say that is 100% duty. Out of that, they are telling 4% for the first year per quarter or part thereof, reduction will be done. Sir, 16% for the first year. Second year, if you are going ahead and re-exporting it, then they are going ahead and telling 3% per quarter or part thereof, then it will be 12%. Third year, 2.5% means 10% per annum and fourth year ke liye it is 2% per annum, 2% per quarter, so it is 8% per annum and hence whatever is the reduced percentage, that much amount of duty drawback will be given. So, for an example, if I go ahead and re-export my motor car after three quarters, sir, from the date of import, I exported after three quarter, then three quarters ke liye 4% into 3, 12% is gone, 100% is 12% gone. 88% ka duty drawback will be given. But remember one thing, duty drawback is only after 2 years, will only be given if CBIC extend the time limit. Otherwise, after 2 years, whenever you go ahead and export, there is no duty drawback, absolutely nothing. Okay, sir, point is clear. They have given the percentages, but after 2 years, you will be given duty drawback only if CBIC extends the time period. 
Now, sir, all other goods ka case mein, so supposedly I imported a laptop for my personal use, then it comes in second category. But if I imported a laptop, might be for official use, then it will come in the third category. So, sir, here, based on your period of usage, duty drawback will be given. If you have gone and imported an article and you have used it up to three months, then 15 95% duty drawback will be given, sir, greater than 3 months, up to 6 months, then 85% duty drawback, greater than 6 months, up to 9 months, 75%, greater than 9 months, up to 12 months, 70%, greater than 12 months, up to 15 months, 65%, greater than 15 months, up to 18 months, 60%, and greater than 18 months, it is nil. So, sir, how do we remember? You can remember 9, 5, first of all, 3 months, 3 months ka gap is there always. Sir, then reduction will be 10%, then again reduction will be 10%, then reduction will be 5, then reduction will be 5, then reduction will be 5, and then 0. So, sir, my number is 9510105550. Baba, this is not my number, don't call nothing, but save in your phone, duty drawback ka number. 9510, 9510 reduce, again 10 reduce, then reduce 555, five, five, and then you get 0. Done, sir. Point is clear. So, sir, I went ahead and told you over here. Section number 74 may. Section number 74 1 goes ahead and says, when you have imported something and you have exported as such, then duty drawback will be given 98%. Sir, I imported something. I went ahead and used it for some time and then exported first category over here wearing apparels etc may no duty drawback motor car or any import which is done by an individual for personal use then 4 percent reduction first year per quarter of part thereof second year 3 percent third year 2.5 fourth year 2 percent per quarter or part thereof sir third category may if you are following all other goods which are not motor motor car or if it is not individual car individual who has imported for personal or private use other than that all the goods 95101055 and 0 done sir point is clear sir here there are always some condition under section number 74 which they have told goods will be always identified by the ac or dc as the goods which are imported because only what you have imported you have to go ahead and export so ac dc will always go ahead and verify what you had imported only you are going ahead and Exporting. Secondly, goods should be entered for export within two years from the date of payment of duty on importation. When you imported, you paid the duty. Let export order came from the date of payment. Let export order should be within two years for the purpose of export or extension only can be given by the CBIC. Sir, no requirement to realize foreign currency, minimum validation criteria, etc. is no there. So, it's saying no requirement to realize foreign currency or no requirement means minimum value addition criteria etc is not there. Now, section number 75 comes. What is section number 75 going ahead and telling? You went ahead and imported some item from outside India, might be cloth. Out of the cloth, you made final product and now final product when you are going ahead and exporting, remember one thing, you will be given duty drawback under section number 75. But section number 75 may, the people who are going ahead and exporting, they get duty drawback of the custom duty. Might be you imported raw material. When you imported the raw material, you paid some custom duty. You went ahead and paid some social welfare surcharge and you paid GST also. Baba, GST too, you have to take input tax credit. But basic custom duty, social welfare surcharge, all the duties which you have paid on the goods which you have manufactured, all those duties ka duty drawback is given under section number 75. In IGST which is paid, you have to take input tax credit. Because a person, Baba, who is claiming duty drawback under section number 75 is basically a manufacturer and if you are manufacturing and exporting, Baba exporters are always interstate supplier and you will always be registered under GST. So, IGST ka to, you have to cre take credit only, GST compensation says also you have to take the credit. All other duties which you have gone ahead and paid while manufacturing those goods, those duties ka you will be given duty drawback under section number 75. Done, sir. Duty drawback on imported material which you have used in manufacturing of the exported goods. The goods are imported, import duties paid, used in the manufacturing of the goods, and now new product is being exported. Section number 74 was basically for traders who imported something and sold the same thing outside India. There is no value addition, etc., done in India. Section number 75 is you bought raw material, cleared in India, out of the raw material you made the final product and final product is exported, then Baba, they are telling whatever duties etc. was paid on the material which was used in manufacturing the final product, those duties ka duty drawback will be given. But government in section number 75 does not go ahead and determine the duty drawback for each exporter. Government goes ahead and says that we will go ahead and fix all industry rate and give duty drawback, we will talk about it. Then. You can export as normal cargo that is by filing shipping bill or 
but baggage is not allowed over here or you can send your goods by post also and claim the duty drawback under section number 75. Baba, 74 may you get duty drawback of all the duties which you have paid including IGST, GST compensation says but here you don't get duty drawback of the GST which is there because GST ka to you have to take input tax credit. All the other duties which you have basically bond on the raw material whatever duties you have paid of that duty drawback is given under section number 75. Sir, there is no criteria for identification because when you import it might be imported cloth. Now you have made the final product. Final product is different from the imported material and hence there is no identification ka criteria. ACDC will not identify because he can't identify. Final product will be definitely very different from the one which you had imported. Then no time limit to export but above there was a time limit of 2 years. Sir, value addition criteria is stipulated. You have to exceed the value addition criteria. Only then the duty drawback will be given. And forex realization also is very mandatory in time. Means as per the time limit of the FEMA, you should realize the foreign currency. Sir, now along with the section number 75, we have to read custom. We have to read customs and central excise duty drawback rule 2079. Sorry. Ah, sir, you are a little tired, I think. Okay, nothing. Customs and Central Excise Duty Drawback Rule 2017 goes ahead and says that, sir, sir, first of all, it will say, my name is Customs and Central Excise Duty Drawback Rule. Sir, rule number uh, 2 will say over here about the definition. Now, 3 goes ahead and says, whenever you are going ahead and claiming duty drawback, you will be given on the all industry rate. Basically, the underlying principle is that government fixes a rate per unit of article which will be given as duty drawback. Government is telling, hey, you are shirt ka manufacturer and you are manufacturing cloth you are importing and you are making shirt and you are exporting. Now, cloth you are importing, what are the other items you are importing? I can't sit with everyone and decide how much duty was borne by everyone and decide one duty drawback rate for everyone. No, I will not do that. So, government have fixed one all industry rate saying, sir, Based on your FOB, this much percentage will be given duty drawback or might be uh, whatever items you are exporting per item, this much will be the duty drawback. So, all industry rate means duty drawback allowed at a per per prescribed percentage of the FOB or rate which is fixed rate per unit. Average amount fixed by the government. Baba, what is all industry rate? It's an average amount which is fixed by the government based on the data of the industry. So, might be for electronics government told 10% duty drawback, for clothes government told 12% duty drawback of the FOB. Done. So, this is all industry rate. The next one is brand rate. Rule number 6 goes ahead and talks about brand rate which is there. If all industry rate is not fixed for a product, might be my product which I am exporting. Sir, all industry rate is not there. Then go to the government and apply to the principal commissioner or commissioner of custom within 3 months from the late export order because you are exporting from the late export order. Within 3 months, you have to apply for a fixation of duty drawback. And Baba, when you are going ahead and applying for a all, because your case may all industry rate is not there, so you have to go ahead and apply for brand rate. He will give you a brand rate and then you will go ahead and apply for a uh, duty drawback, right? So, it will, it is going to take time. So, you can go ahead and ask for provisional duty drawback. Whenever you are given provisional duty drawback, that is always based on bond plus a security which is there. Done, sir. Rule number 7 goes ahead and says, if all industry rate, supposingly by applying the all industry rate, you are getting the duty drawback, which is less than 80% of the duties, which are actually actual taxes and duties on input. Might be I paid 100 rupees on a duty on my uh, inputs which are there, but I am getting duty drawback only 70 rupees. Then they are telling you can apply for a special brand rate. If you are getting less than 80% by applying the all industry rate, you see that you are getting less than 80% of the actual duties paid on inputs as duty drawback, then you can apply for a special brand rate. Exporter can apply to the principal commissioner or commissioner of custom within three months from, from what date? From the late export order for the application for fixation of special brand rate. Baba, when special brand rate will be fixed, then you will apply for duty drawback, then it will be given, it is going to take time. So, in the meanwhile, provisional duty drawback may be provided based on you have to give a bond plus a security also. Done, sir. Sir, if I don't go in and apply within three months for fixation, if I don't go in and apply within three months of late export order, then the extension of time limit can be given under for rule number six and rule number seven. Both extension of the time limit can be given. Belated application you can file. Assistant commissioner or deputy commissioner can extend the time limit by further three months. Principal commissioner or commissioner can extend the time limit by further six months. But remember, there is a fees for 3 months ka extension, lower of 1% of the FOB or rupees 1000. For principal commissioner or commissioner when he is extending by 6 months, the fees is lower of 2% of the FOB or 
2000 rupees remember once they go ahead now inflation is happening prices are changing so sir government can always go ahead and keep revising the power is there with the government to revise the all industry rate government may revise all industry rate which is fixed under rule number 3 because every time the duties are changing etc and hence government has a power to go ahead and revise the all industry rate rule number 4 rule number 3 went ahead and told about all industry rate rule number 4 went ahead and told about revision of all industry rate rule number 6 went ahead and told about brand rate rule number 7 special brand rate rule number 8 goes ahead and says value addition no duty drawback export value of the goods is less than the value of imported material used in manufacturing of the goods might be when you went ahead and imported the raw material you went ahead and paid spend 1000 dollar over here now when you are going ahead and making the final product and exporting the export value means the fob value should be more than 1000 rupees over 1000 dollar over here they are telling export value of the goods might be here the export value is supposedly only dollar 800 then they are going ahead and telling hey what value addition you did in india nothing no value addition in india you have already spend more than what you have earned we will not give you any duty drawback remember export value of the goods is less than the value of imported material used in the manufacturing of goods then baba you will not get any duty drawback and sir export value should also exceed such percentage of the value of imported material which are used as notified by the central government on specified goods means if central government have gone ahead and told value addition should be 20% on the imported material then at least 20% should exceed they are going ahead and telling export value should exceed if it does not exceed such percentage of the value of imported material used then baba you will not be given any duty drawback it should exceed the percentage which has been specified by the government one more point i which i have written some important point over here important note no duty drawback if goods are manufactured out of duty free import hey you got imports on which duty only not paid what duty drawback you will get you will not get any duty drawback secondly sir whenever you are if exporter has filed for duty drawback under all industry rate you applied for a duty drawback under all industry rate and you are also telling i want special brand rate not possible both the hands laddus can't be there they are telling if exporter filed for duty drawback under all industry rate he cannot request for fixation of special brand rate baba if you are applying for special brand rate you can take provisional duty drawback but you can't take all industry rate can under duty drawback and then also apply for special brand rate not possible not allowed The next one over here is rule number nine over here, sir. Upper limit of duty drawback. Upper limit means means the maximum duty drawback you will get is one third of the market price of the exported product, sir. Supposingly, if the market price of a product, okay, they went ahead and told the FOB value is supposingly one lakh rupees, and you are getting duty drawback a percentage is thirty percent. Thirty percent means how much duty drawback you are getting? Thirty thousand rupees. ठीक है? The FOB value is one lakh. 30% is the duty drawback you are getting 30000 rupees the market price of the goods is supposedly only 60000 rupees is the market price they are telling the maximum duty drawback can be 1/3 1/3 is what so the maximum duty drawback you will get is only 20000 rupees the market price ka 1/3 value otherwise people will keep inflating the fob value and people will keep inflating the fob value and get more duty drawback so government went ahead and told we are fixing the upper limit the upper limit is whatever is the domestic market price the wholesale market price of those goods in the domestic market of that one third will be the maximum duty drawback so 30000 or 20000 you will get a duty drawback of only 20000 rupees done sir on the right hand side i have gone ahead and told the difference between duty drawback under section number 74 and 75 sir when is it admissible imported goods are exported as such or after use then 74 ka duty drawback 75 ka duty drawback imported goods are used in manufacturing of goods which are exported imported materials are used in manufacturing the goods which are being exported it is exported as cargo post or baggage all the three are okay here it can be exported as cargo or post baggage is not allowed time limit to export is generally 2 year here there is no time limit identity identification of the goods 74 may identification can be done by the sodc but 75 may identification criteria is not there 74 may value addition criteria is not there because what you are importing only you are going and exporting 75 may you have to do value addition value addition criteria criteria has been specified and only if you exceed the value addition criteria the duty drawback will be given the next one over here is section number 75 a remember section number 75 a is applicable for section number 74 and section number 75 interest on duty drawback very very important from exam point of view if duty drawback under 74 and 75 is not paid within one month of submission of claim 
you submitted your claim one month payment is not given then you will get after one month whatever the time period is there you will get interest at the rate of six percent shall be paid from the date after the expiry of one month till the date of payment so sir date to date you see one month once the one month expired from the next day you will get interest at the rate of six percent sir if dbk is paid erroneously might be you did not get the foreign currency or might be or becomes recoverable when does it become recoverable if you don't recover the foreign currency within time then they are going and telling if supposingly you took some dbk erroneously or any dbk became recoverable then it shall be demanded and if not paid within two months recovery will start so, so remember one thing supposingly there was an erroneous dbk which was given then they are telling they will go ahead and demand from you and once the demand order is given within the next two months after the two months they will start what everyone recovery done sir this is point is clear but listen to me very carefully erroneous refund if erroneous duty drawback was given you paid back over here then baba till here ka interest has to be given from this day till here you have to give interest sir i paid back over here you paid back over here from here from the date of erroneous refund till the paid back you have to give interest sir they recovered from you over here recovered are whenever it is recovered or paid back from the date of erroneous refund you have to pay the interest Baba, sometimes students get confused that, sir, interest will start from the date of demand, two months recovery period after that interest. No, Baba, no. They are telling, sir, erroneous refund will be demanded. And if you don't pay within two months, then recovery will start. This is a separate thing. Separately also, they have told interest at the rate 15% is payable from the date of payment, the day they had paid it to you till the date of recovery of duty drawback or till the date it is paid back whenever you paid back or whenever it is recovered from you till the date from the date of erroneous duty drawback till the date you paid back you have to pay interest at the rate of 15 percent the next one over here is section number 76 over here prohibition and regulation of duty drawback in certain cases sir Government says no duty drawback shall be allowed if the market price of the goods is less than the duty drawback. For an example, there is one iPhone over here, which is a very little old iPhone. On that iPhone, I had gone ahead and bought that iPhone from outside India for 1 lakh rupees. And on importation, I paid 20,000 ka duty over here. Or I will go ahead and take simple, supposingly 10,000 ka duty over here. Okay. Now, if I am going ahead and exporting as such without use only, then I will get 9,800 duty drawback over here. But you know what? This iPhone, if I am selling in India, not even in 5,000 people are buying. So, they are going ahead and telling if the market price of the goods is less than the duty drawback, government is telling, hey, you think I am a fool? Market price is 5,000. You are trying to take duty drawback of 9,800. No duty drawback at all. No duty drawback shall be given. And duty drawback will not be given if the amount is less than 50 rupees duty drawback no duty drawback if central government is of the opinion that goods are likely to be smuggled back for an example when you were getting the goods into india you were trying to smuggle it and you were caught and hence at the custom port you landed up paying 10 lakh as the duty now you are telling sir i want to go ahead and export the goods from india out outside india please give me 98 percent duty drawback means 9.8 lakh a duty drawback you give it to me because i am going to send it outside india government knows that you are going to smuggle it back into india and hence they will not go ahead and give you the duty drawback done sir point is clear over here section number seven this chapter this chapter from exam point of view, what kind of a chapter it is everyone? Sir, this chapter from exam point of view, for your ex number exam, it is an A graded chapter. For May 24 student, anyway, this chapter has been excluded. Okay, sir, point is clear. A graded chapter, I feel three marks now on small question can come. This point which is there, no? This is very, very important. Other than that, section number 75 is also very important. Section number 76 is also important. Our rule number 9. And rule number 8 is also used as question sometime. So, please be very careful and solve some questions and then go for the exam. Done, sir. Point is clear. I'll go ahead and close my revision on the chapter of duty drawback. Done.